With this album, I think you've done something that, I mean, you've showcased all the vocal range. Yes. You've got in you, you know, totally. and yeah, it's Sebastian Bach 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, do you see your career, I mean, your solo career as an evolution too? Um, you know, I try to explain to people that don't make records how magical it is and nebulous. Like, just imagine going into a room with nothing, like, and your band members, and a couple months later, or a year later, or whatever it is, you're expected to come out of there with, like, a whole body of work that you're so proud of and you want to put your name on and do interviews about it and tour the world about it. So there's not really a, a, a definite way of getting to that point. The only, the only direction I ever have is making something that I want to listen to, like that I want to hear again and again and again. And I want to grab you by the shirt and say, you got to hear this. Oh, this is great. Like once I feel that excitement, that's when I know I'm done. And that's always been the same, like for 18 in life. And I remember you and you've gone wild and monkey business. It's the same like, feeling as give him hell. When, when, I'm, when I feel like I've done my best as a singer and made the best record I can. That's when I feel that real excitement, like, you know, and I can't fake that feeling. That's a real feeling, you know? People say, Sebastian, you have a lot of energy. The music mo puts me, makes me fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but like, the music gets inside of me, and when I feel it, I, I, I can't... Uh, hide my excitement yeah. and I on the converse conversely sometimes I can't hide my displeasure <laughs> yeah like when you threw that microphone in the air at God's of Metal I a couple years ago no I yeah. didn't throw it that's an amazing story okay remember how hot it was that yeah. day it was like a hundred degrees yeah. right and <laughs> we went on in the sun right with the sun hitting us and in Slave to the Grind I do this with the mic cord. Here's the crazy thing about that. The mic cord didn't come off the mic. I shredded the mic cord. The mic cord shredded the cord. <laughs> really? Yeah, it didn't come off the come connection. Off, yeah. That's what usually happens. Yeah. That day at God's of Metal, the cord was in fucking shreds. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> It was like, I picked up the cord, it was just some rubber and some fucking, what the fuck? Yeah. And I stopped the show. <laughs> Start over. Start over, yeah. I think you walked off the stage and came back. I, I, yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, that was great. I, yeah. I, That's rock and roll, isn't nobody, it? Yeah. I'm just, I just glad nobody gets hurt, you know? Yeah. And then, <laughs> did you name your new album after Witch Finds 1980 debut? Or no. no. Is there a the witch find? Yeah. Is it witch find or witch New find wave in general? Of British, no, 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 no. Witch find. Uh, New wave of British. Heavy I've heard of witch finder general. I've never, yeah. I've never heard of no, witch this find. This is another brand. They no. had an album in '98 called wow. Give Them Hell. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay I, I knew, so I knew it was too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. And how's the chemistry within the band members this day? I mean, you had a lot of uh, uh, musicians come in, step out of the band, no. do you it's feel comfortable very, with the band you have right now? I mean, I, I, of them are it's the, the way tour, touring is now, yeah. it's hard to keep the same five guys together. Not just for me, for any band. You go look at all the bands. Yeah. Um, my drummer, Bobby, who I love, um, who's on the new record, of all my solo records, he also plays the band Fate's Warning. So sometimes he's not available um, because he is playing with Fate's Warning. Like we just shot the three new videos for Give Him Hell, Temptation, All My Friends Are Dead, and uh, Taking Back Tomorrow. Okay. And Bobby, All at once, you yeah, shot three videos. Yeah. yeah. And um, Bobby couldn't make it, so I had Will Hunt from Evanescence. Oh, yeah. He's going to be doing some shows with me too. Okay, including yeah. the shows you're doing this summer? Some, oh. yeah. 
okay. Yeah. And what about the um, very special guests you have on this album? The cool thing about being a solo artist is that I can play with different guitar players or whatever. A lot, a lot of fans or a lot of journalists will say, when are you getting back with Skid Row? And I'll say, you know, I understand people's longing for that. But if I was with those guys right now, I wouldn't be putting out a record with Duff McKagan, John Five, and Steve Stevens. If you've got to get a new bass player, Duff McKagan's a pretty good guy to get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do. Yeah. He'll do. John Five, he's pretty good. Yeah. He's pretty good. He yeah, knows his way. He knows, he knows his way around the fretboard. Steve Stevens, he yeah. He can play a few chords. He's right? all right. Yeah. Huh? Steve Stevens. <laughs> And um, also, you had Bob Marlet yes. returning as a producer. And yeah. How was his contribution to the record? I mean, how is he important in developing? He's the incredibly sound? important, and for two specific reasons. One, he captures my voice on the record as high definition and quality for the listener. As you can't, you. I don't. I say to him, "What button are you pushing? What?" <laughs> What knob are you twiddling? Because it sounds high, so high quality, you know, like for an audiophile, like good quality sound. This is very important to me. I, I'm very specific about having great, great sound, you know. Um, the other thing that he helps me with is my melody lines. Because sometimes when a guitar player or a musician gives me some music to sing to, sometimes I hear what I should do right away. Other times, it takes me a long time to figure out whether to sing it really low and clean, or really high and dirty, or right up the middle, Like, because I have many yeah. voices in here. So Bob is great helping me with my melody lines, whether to go as high as I can, or... I, I, he can tell if he sounds good I don't know not. sometimes whether to fucking do it like Rob Halford or, yeah. or Tom Waits, you yeah. know, I can, do, <laughs> I can do both. So I have to find the right sound. He's very good at that. Are you comfortable nowadays with your voice? Yes, absolutely. In comparison to um, I mean, when you were 25? Yeah, studio-wise, I, 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 I love making records. I love it. I love... The whole process of it, yeah. yeah. I, I know some singers, as they get older, they lose their range. I think the song <clears throat> Push Away on the new record, I think that's the highest notes I've, I've ever, ever uh, reached. I mean, we can go sit down at the piano and go doo doo doo, but I know it's fucking <laughs> it's way up yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. So I like to capture that while it still exists. And the style that I sing in, not a lot of singers sing like that no, anymore. No, no, like no, high no. tenor. And you know it's Italian, right? You know the style that I sing is bel canto. Bel canto. Which is an Italian scale taught to me by Don Lawrence, who John Bon Jovi sent me to in 1987. Here's the thing. There's many, many singers can sing like once a month or a couple times a month. When you go on the road and you sing every single night, you have got to know how to, how to do that because if you lose your voice, you can't, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's the Italian bel canto style is what I use. Bon Jovi, Dee Snyder, uh, Lady Gaga, Christina Aguilera, Tony Bennett. We all use the same scale system. Thank you, Italy. Thank you very much. Thank oh, you, Italians. It was a pleasure. Thank you for inventing singing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bel canto been very, very good to me. <laughs> <laughs>